In Exodus chapter 2 and verse 11, And it came to pass in those days when Moses was, was grown, that he went unto his brethren and looked on their burdens. And he spied on and he spied an Egyptian smiting a Hebrew one of his brethren and he looked this way and he looked that way and when he saw that there was no man he slew the Egyptian and he hid him in the sand and when he went out to the second day behold two men in the Hebrews strove together and said unto him that did the wrong Wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? And he said unto him, Who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Intendest thou to kill me, as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared, and said, Surely this thing is known. And when Pharaoh had heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh, and dwelt in the land of Medain, and he sat down by a well. Now the background on this, this is... what Moses was going through when he seen their burden something touched his heart it's no different from us when we see people we have a burden for them because we being a Christian if you're a child of the king you have a burden for a lost and dying world especially you see people and you know that you could help them through Jesus Christ and I think this is what I think I think this is what God saw what Moses could do. He saw their burden. It's affected, this affected God. And now Moses wanted to take care of it himself. This is how this took, was taking place. Moses thought he could do it himself, and you can't do it yourself. You've got to have help. But now when Moses was going through this part of his life, he looked, like I said, he looked... This is what the scripture says. He looked this way and he looked that way. In other words, that's what sinners do. They look this way and they look that way. They want to see if no one's seeing them. But sure enough, someone's always watching you. And believe me, I know. That's like when you do something and you think your parents aren't going to find out. Oh, rest assured, they will find out. Because I know, and every child in here knows. Even my little girl knows. But uh, it will come to pass. But anyway... When, um, when Moses was uh, in this situation, he saw no man, he slew the Egyptian, and he hit him in the sand. He's trying to take care of this himself. Okay, now after this took place, he found out, the Egyptians found out, I mean, I'm sorry, the Hebrews found out what took place. Moses fled to Medellin. Okay, now, uh, this is the part of the scripture I'm going to start reading. It's in... Uh, Exodus chapter 3, the first 14 verses. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Medellin, and he fled, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert, and he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him into a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that the, he turned he, and aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. And he said, Draw not hither, put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for thy place where thy standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of the fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. In verse 7 it says, Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people, which are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by the reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. For I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land, and to a good land, to a large, and to a land of flowing with milk and honey, and to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Persezites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. Now therefore, behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You remember when you cried to the good Lord above? Praise the Lord. I have also seen the oppression wherefore the Egyptians have oppressed them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring them forth, my people, 
<laughs> what a blessing that is. It's because he's not saying your people. He's saying my people. <laughs> the children of Israel. Woo! Uh, out of, I'm getting messed up here. But then out of Egypt. And Moses said unto, the, uh, unto God, Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh, that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? And he said, Certainly. I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth thy people out of Egypt, you shall serve God into the mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers have sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is thy name? And they shall, oh, uh, and what shall I say unto them? They, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. What a blessing these precious words are. Now, in verse 1, Moses is, um, is tending sheep, his father-in-law. Obviously, I mean, um, that's, a job, it's a poor man's job. And um, Moses knew uh, every place about that desert. It's no different from we go to work. We know every road. We know every crack. We know every stoplight. We know every bump. It's no different. Moses is tending his sheep. But now if we go back to, now this is what I think I think Moses had a lot of time on his hands when he would sit down. And those burdens would come back to, would come back to him. He would think about the burdens because each Israel was still in bondage. They were still in bondage. Moses is tending sheep. Sitting back throughout the parts of the day. Moses knew every water and hole there was in that part of the desert. He knew what was going on. It's no, like I said, it's no different from us. Now, in verse 2, it talks about getting your attention. What does it take to get our attention? So many times, God's trying to get our attention, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame out of the midst of a bush. And that, what we're talking about a midst, that's way over yonder. But there was, but more than likely, there was probably fires all the time out there in the desert. It's no different, but there was something about this flame. Yeah. The flame wasn't burning the bush. Right, right. So that means, it, now I didn't see nothing about saying smoke. Mm -hmm. It was just a flame. Yes. God has to get our attention, and that's what he's doing with Moses. Right. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame out of the midst of the bush, and he looked, and behold... The bush burned and the fire with fire, and the bush was not consumed. The Lord came into a form of, of, of a burning bush and saw it. The Lord can come any kind of form he wants, but getting our attention, little did Moses know what was going to be taking place that day. That day, Moses' life changed. Just like when you give your life to Jesus Christ. Just think of these 10 precious souls. It was either 10 or 11 precious souls that give their life to Jesus Christ. Their life changed. Their name is written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. So thankful for that day that I gave my life and I'm to Jesus Christ. And I know that you're all tickled to death that it happened to you as well. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. He's getting our attention. Now with the burning bush. Now Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burnt. The bush is getting his attention, but what it is, there's a curiosity. There's a curiosity taking place here. What is it about these Christians that go, if you're not a Christian and you see Christians going, raising their hands or saying amen, but granted, some people aren't as effervescent as some, I guess you could say, but now some people are loud and some people aren't. And, um, but when I come in, now me personally, when I get in, and I'm telling you what, when, when it just, oh, it's just, it's just something that just comes upon you. I mean, I'm telling you, when I am by myself, I'm reading and or 
and I'm reading a book, and you, it just gets my attention. I can get engulfed. I remember Brother Mike Goodson saying one time, you just want to mm, get into and just scream your, uh, up until a certain point because you can get excited. I get excited when I read this stuff. It's just an excitement. That's me because once when things, when things changed in my life, where am I going to put all that energy at? I'm going to put it in the scriptures. I'm going to put it in the reading. And then I'm going to put it in my daughter, Kaylee. And there's where my energy goes. That's what I do. But anyway, in verse 4, it talks about the turning point. And when the Lord saw that he turned. Now understand, in verse 3, he turned. Now when he, the Lord's looking. Now the only reason why the Lord's looking because he turned. Moses turned first. And then that's when the Lord turned. And then that's when he said, when you're getting, when God's getting your attention, in other words, when you're back there sitting back there in the pew, and he's getting your attention, and you're turning to the pulpit, the preacher or the pastor, he's getting your attention through the preaching of God's word. You're turning to God, and God is turning to you. And now he's got your attention. And this is where it's changing. Because I think you're under conviction right now. You're under conviction. He's getting your attention. It all changes in verse 4. And when he saw the Lord, he turned and set aside. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush. And he said, Moses, Moses. Now to understand now, he said it twice. That's very important. That's the double call. That's the double call. That's implied in very importance. Just as when God called Abraham, Abraham, in Genesis chapter 22, verse 11. Samuel, Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. Simon, Simon. And then, and I didn't write that down. But in verse 22, that and Simon, Simon, I didn't write that down, but anyway. But um, the thing about it is, that's in a very important, very important, because now Moses is drawn to the Lord. It's getting better and better, or gooder and gooder, I guess you could say. And when he said, he draw not hither, draw not hither, the turning point, the calling, now in verse 5 it says Moses is getting ready to approach the holy God yeah. and that's when the, now this is my interpretation this is when a, a sinner is coming up that aisle he's getting ready to come to the altar and he's getting ready to give his life to Jesus Christ yeah. <laughs> praise the Lord I love this stuff and anyway I may not be much, but I tell you, I'm having a time of my life. I am. I'm having a time of my life. It's just when the, co the Holy God... Now, back during that time frame, you had when to take those sandals off because the sandals represent sin. Moses laid it prostrate in front of because you couldn't get too close if you get I, I think Moses knew enough not to get too close because if he did God would strike him dead yeah. and you have to take the sandals off to get the world off of you Indeed. you come and that's how we are yeah, sure. when we're when a sinner comes to God you're giving it all you're giving it all at the altar you. you're laying the sin aside you don't want nothing more to do with it right. Moses give his life to the Lord that day he hadn't Moses did not have a clue what was going to be taking place. Moses woke up that morning thinking it's a, just another day. And that's how we are a lot of times. We wake up, it's just another day. But God came in here to his life this day. Moses, what a blessing he is. Anybody in here could be a Moses. Anybody can. By just listening to what the Lord tells us. Moreover, in verse... Six. It talks about. Moreover, he said, "I am the God of, of the fathers, of the father of the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob." And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon him. 
there's the 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 patriarch identifying himself as God. He hid his face. There's a God is telling Moses that he was the God of the previous patriarchs of what was taking place back then. That's what was God was telling Moses for. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the afflictions of my people that are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry by the reason of the taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. In verse 7, it talks about a compassion of God, because when he sees your sorrows, he has compassion on us. And praise the Lord for that. That's why Jesus went to the cross. That's why Jesus went to the cross, because of, of a compassion of God we have. Praise the Lord for that. I mean, who am I that I should go, that he should do anything for me? I mean, I'm tickled to death with just being saved. Then I know that sometimes we can be rascals when we get out there in this old world and we're by ourselves. But rest assured, the world every now and then can come out in us. But like I said, we have, rest assured, you can take that to Jesus and apologize for what you've done because you cannot have no iniquity between you and the Lord. It's just you cannot do that. And, and because we have such an, a, passion, a compassion, God, God has seen your affliction. Come and the, Egypt represents the world and he, he has heard our cry and he knows what you're going through if you're in the sin and business. And he wants to help you. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. And verse 7, no, I'm sorry, verse 8, it talks about, For I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them out of that land, a land, a good land, and a large, into a land flowing with milk and honey, and to the land of the Canaanites, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, the Persezites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites. It's personal. He wants to deliver you and take us out of this world of sin. He wants to, Amen. what can I say? He, he, he wants to, to deliver you from this world. Like I said, he wants to deliver you from this world and you just you have to trust him at what he's saying he wants to deliver us and if the 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 devil he is the hardest taskmaster that you're having to deal with because he can deal with you and he can put thoughts in your head and that's the and that's a lot of the issues and you've heard preachers after preachers say it's in the mind and it is in the mind and that's what you have to deal with it's just it's stuff it just happens that's it just happens excuse me for one second oh goodness mm. praise the lord i tell you it um in verse 9 it talks about now therefore behold the cry the children of israel is come unto me and i have seen their oppression wherefore the egyptians oppress them there's the cry there's the cry that the devil is saying, I'm sorry, that God is saying, come unto me and I will take care of your cares. Moses is going, Moses has got his hands full. Now therefore, and when I will send you unto Pharaoh, and they, thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, of Egypt. Now the thing about it is, when you give your life to Jesus Christ on a Sunday, you've got to go to work on a Monday. You got that, in other words, Moses has got to go back. Moses has got to go back to Egypt. And that's just like saying, you've got to go back into a world. Everything's pleasant and, and glorious on Sunday. If you get saved on, in the morning like I did, I, ha I went back to this, that evening and everything was great. Then you have to go back Monday and people saw you Friday cussing up a storm. And then um, now Monday, uh, you're not cussing no more. And that's what happens. But uh, it can happen. It, um, that's what happened to me. And I remember there was a guy by the name of Sarge. He had a nickname named Sarge. Uh, his nickname was called Sarge. He said, buddy, you don't, uh, why aren't you cussing like you used to? I said, well, I give my life to Jesus Christ. And I said, well, and he said, well, that's all right, because I'm a Christian too. And I said, well, I didn't know that. <laughs> and, um, 
<laughs> but praise the Lord, I, um, and then there was, uh, you know, that's when you start telling people about what um, God has done in your life. Yeah. And, um, I mean, it's been, I mean, it's no big secret. I mean, I used to be a, a, one of the, you know, I was just a plain old downright sinner. That's all I was. Yeah. And that's all, I mean, that's what sinners do. You're, I, do I, was, I had a pretty good business at being a sinner. And, um, but I didn't think I was that bad. You know, I didn't think I was that bad, but I was. I, I, was a, I thought I was a good old boy. I wasn't. I was a bad old boy. Yeah. But praise the Lord, I'm glad God came saw compassion on me. Oh, just like on that one particular day, he saw compassion on all of his kids. Sure. He gave his life to, I mean, you all give your life to Jesus Christ, and what a blessing that is. Sure. It is. It's wonderful to be a Christian. Yeah. And if you're not a Christian this evening, you can be. Sure. Romans 10, 13, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yeah. Praise the Lamb of God. Praise the Lamb of God. Yeah. It, um, now Moses, Moses had to get 40 years out of him before God could use him. He had to make him a humble servant. He had to get the world out of him. And that's what it takes. He'll get you down to your lowest state. And I'm telling you, I would have never have thought I would have when I give my life to Jesus Christ, I, I would come up here uh, to the altar, not up here, at, but where I got saved at, I have to go up there. And those were the hardest steps I ever had to take. But you can do it. Anybody can do it. You can do it. It's just... Um, in verse 11, it talks about being and Moses said unto God who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt it won't be easy Moses had his hands full going I don't Moses had his hands full he really did when sitting laying down or sitting down in a desert and now he's going back to home now he's going back to Egypt and he has to deal with all that. But he, has, he had a humble heart. And that's what God will do for you. He'll make you a humble heart. He'll give you a humble heart. He fixes your heart. He makes that stony heart a, a heart of flesh. And that's what he does. And that's why he had a burden. He, worked in, he was working on his heart back then. Praise the Lamb of God. Moses thought he knew who he was. He was a prince of Egypt. He thought he had it made. Now he went from being a prince of Egypt. Now he's just chasing sheep. God humbled him. He can humble you. He can humble. He can humble anybody. That's what it's about to be in a humble servant. That's what you have to be. He has to bring you down, making you the base of things, and that's why I honestly believe there's. Really, only one thing that really irritates me, and that's about it. Other than that, I'm a, I'm as humble as I can be, and I. That's just how I am. I just I enjoy people's company. I lo, I enjoy hum, cutting up with people. But he just may God just makes you a humble servant, and you just I just I love coming to church. That's my thing. I love coming to church and hearing and seeing my brothers and sisters in Christ. It's a joy to come here to church and, and to do all this. I know I'm getting sidetracked, but my pastor said, preach it. And I said, okay, <laughs> praise the Lord. And this, Or he said, shout it out. That's what he said, shout it out. I said, okay. I haven't been doing a whole lot of shouting, but I tell you what, I love this stuff. And anyway, yeah. Moses had victory in verse 12, and he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and I shall be a token unto thee, and I have sent thee, that thou hast brought forth a people out of Egypt. Ye shall serve God upon the mountain. That's victory. The victory thing of it is. And you're, when you're in Christ, you already have a victory. You're a winner. You are a winner. And um, Moses is now speaking to God. 
before at the burning bush, Moses wasn't. Moses was a humble servant before God. God wants the Christian to put forth the effort and to serve him. That's what he wants. We're to go out, just like we pass out tracts on Mondays, go serve him. That's what Moses is getting ready to do, is serve the Lord. And that's what the Christian is supposed to do. You all know that. I'm not telling you you, haven't, you have not heard. But it, I tell you what, I asked the pastor one time, I said, why do we keep on, this has been years ago, why do we keep on passing out tracts to the, some of the same houses? He said, it's repetition. That's how they get to know the Lord. Repetition. And that's why the, sometimes when we hear messages, it's repetition. Repetition. Then immediately when somebody asks you a question, you can go to that scripture. And that's what it's about. It's reputation. That's why we read scripture over and over again. Because God's going to hold every one of us accountable. Because we don't know what's going to be taking place. Because he may ask you some scripture. I don't know. I'm just speculating. You don't know. Because on the day of judgment, he may ask you, oh, what, what's this scripture say? What's that scripture say? He could ask you anything. But praise the Lord. I know I'm in. <laughs> praise the Lord. But um, I'll tell you what, in a verse, uh, and Moses said in chapter, uh, chapter 12, and he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and thou shalt be token unto thee, and I have sent thee, and thou shalt have brought forth thy people out of victory, Egypt and serve God until the mountain. And that's the victory. And I'm telling you, when God saves you, this, and he sanctifies the man his personality is raised into its highest pitch of freedom. It is free from sin. And he wants you to be before. He is free from sin, impelling and urging him. When he is delivered from sin, he is free not to sin. Or you are free to sin if he chooses. But you don't want to do that. Praise the Lamb of God. Faith. The Word was in the beginning and with God and the word became flesh and cometh through the earth to tolerate among men to declare God to man so redemption is a holy part from flesh bless the Lamb of God Moses was Christ like delivering God's people and what a blessing that is and 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 Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, I will shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and I shall say unto them, What is thy name? What shall I say to him? We have the assurance. Yeah. We have the assurance. Amen. The God said unto Moses, I am that God, I am, and, and God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, Thou shalt... Thou say unto the children of Israel, I am, have sent me unto you. It, um, he is the I am. Moses, like I said, he was Christ-like, delivering God's people. I, I'm so thankful that I'm a Christian. I'm so thankful that Jesus Christ came into my life. It, um, I'm thankful that he is my I am. I am thankful that I can go to him anytime I want. I am thankful that I have Jesus Christ in my life. These, these dear people in Egypt, these Israeli people, it's no different from today. People are in a bondage and they don't even realize it. I've got family members who are in bondage and they don't even realize it. But I just remember at one time, I used to be in bondage as well. We all used to be. But if you're in Jesus Christ, you're no longer in bondage. Bless the Lamb of God, I tell you. I love Jesus Christ. And I'm so thankful I'm a Christian. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.